I think that one criticism that I often face kind of switching gears is that I'm too anthropocentric. And I think that that's probably a fair criticism. Um, and I'll share a little bit of experience with me. So when I was in college, I took my first philosophy course and I was introduced to Peter Singer. Peter Singer is someone who makes the case for animal welfare and rights that is right. indisputable. And ever mm -hmm. since then, you know, what I kind of already cared about it really put it into perspective and it led me to try to seek out, you know, vegetarianism and veganism. Now, a couple years ago, I had a meatless diet and I failed miserably because I ah. didn't teach myself how to cook. So, you know, that repetition, just the same, getting the same Boca burgers over and over again and just trying to live off of that didn't work. And I thought, oh, you know, this is great. I'm going to go vegan. So, you know, that failed. But I'm back to, you know, the state where I really, especially thinking about the climate and how much veganism would impact the environment. There's just no reason not to anymore. So the reason why why I'm bringing this up is because you are so unique in that you're one of the only candidates proposing a very robust animal welfare uh, platform. And yes. I want you to talk through this because this, you're a vegan. So you are someone who I aspire to be like, I'm trying to learn recipes and actually learn how yeah. to cook for myself. That would, that would be a little bit helpful. Um, but talk about your animal rights platform, because that's something that we don't hear enough about. And this isn't just about animal welfare for that morality aspect, which I think is absolutely right. important, but this is also about the climate. So there's, there's no reason for us not to be vegan anymore. And you're kind of right. bringing that to the forefront. And for a lot of people, it's uncomfortable because it is, you know, it's difficult to grapple with that fact. How am I living my life? Is it fully ethical? No, it's not. You know, right. so um, explain that because, you know, I, I think that that's really important and it's not talked about enough. Yeah, absolutely. So I am vegan. I've been vegan for almost four years now. Um, the reason I went vegan uh, was for the environment. Um, I went and I watched a documentary called Houseferacy after going to a, a climate action march where there was a woman wearing a cow costume holding up a sign saying you can't be a true environment, environmentalist and you're vegan. Watch Houseferacy. So I was like, sure. I'll listen to the random woman in a cow costume. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I went and I watched it and it changed my life. Um, it was by, I think I watched it mid December and then by then or early December and then by January 3rd, um, I was fully vegan. I, I completely eliminated all animal products from my, from my life. Um, well not my life yet, but most, uh, at least from my diet. Um, and, and I felt great. I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to die being malnourished. I, you know, I used to bodybuild when I was in the Navy. Um, I, I, I'm this thin because I don't eat enough. It's not because of my <laughs> uh, but I used to, I used to lift weights and I felt healthier after going vegan after a month than I did my entire peak condition of fitness. Um, so, so, so for me, it was, it was a big radical change. Um, so for that year, I stumbled through it and I was able to continue to to be vegan, learn it. I wasn't like an evangelist vegan at that moment, right? It was like, I'm just going to learn this for me to make sure that I could do it well enough before I start advocating anybody else to do it. It means learning new recipes. That means knowing where to go to restaurants, like knowing every aspect of what it's like to live a life as a vegan. It took me a year. Um, and then after that year, I watched a documentary called Earthlings where I saw the horrors of factory farming. I saw the horrors of, you know, fur-based, uh, you know, leather making, all of it, right? And, and I just was appalled at we were doing this to our world, um, not just environmentally, but just just ethically, I felt like, oh, morally, this is gross. Like we're we're murdering these baby chickens like hours in within birth just because they're males and they provide no use to society. And I was just like, that's disgusting. We need to stop this practice. And so, so I don't, I do not say we should ban all meat. That's not my 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 policy. So let me get into the policies first. I would like to caveat and say this. When I put in um, in my environmental platform, there is a there is a plank in there which is this: the elimination of all animal agriculture subsidies. Right now, we are we are wasting tons of money, and we're picking winners and losers when the dairy industry and the meat industry are actually losing because of the fact that people are becoming more aware and plant based products are becoming more widely available. So we're having to subsidize dairy farmers more than we ever have in this country. One because of Trump's tariffs, which is interesting enough, but another is because it's just not a popular product. We dumped, I think, millions of gallons of milk out last year because it just couldn't leave the shelf 
themselves fast enough. So, so, so we have to stop subsidizing that. We should also subsidize, stop subsidizing fossil fuels. Anything that hurts the environment, we should stop subsidizing. So I'm not just single line animal agriculture. I'm talking about big agro too, that also isn't doing well by the environment either. So when it comes to animal rights, we need to give, we need to start doing things more humanely. Like you're talking about banning, uh, you know, shark fins and, and actually taking, taking real steps against, you know, animal, uh, a horse soaring, which is a horrible practice that is used just to make horses walk higher, right? It's just like they put these iron hoofs on them that are so heavy that they have to like fling their legs up just so they can walk. It's disgusting. The practice is, is inhumane. You also have the fact that when we when we create medicine, for example, so so when we when we have um, testing for new generic medicines and we're going to make Tylenol A. Plus to one all A plus plus right. Every time you make that new iteration, you have to go through all of the testing requirements that the FDA requires before you can just put it into the public. So that means they know what Tylenol is going to do to the mice, but they go ahead and put the mice to the same rigorous test to kill them every time. It's not necessary. Like it's un- it's useless. It's useless loss of life in in a system that is more expensive. It's not it's not conducive to research. We could do it on a computer screen. We don't have to kill the mice every time we know how the mice are going to perform to the like dna molecule we know right so we can do things like that so so basically what i'm talking about is really just common sense reforms and and you know i'm not this this vegan that's going to create vegan bill number a and vegan bill or number a but (laughs) vegan bill a (laughs) vegan bill b um but but we're gonna be like hey we're gonna slide in this amendment to the farm bill hey we're gonna slide this amendment into this medical bill we're just gonna do these little amendments that are going to benefit animals that the country already agrees with and not call it vegan. We're just going to call it animal rights, Mm -hmm. you know, and people agree with this stuff. This isn't foreign. People don't like what's happening at SeaWorld. People don't like the idea of fur practice after they watch it happen for the first time when they electrocute these poor animals from the anus and pull out the, you know, disclaimer, right? Like it's gross. It's, 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 it's horrifying, like a horror movie. So, so I think most Americans can agree that that stuff is just wrong and archaic and nobody wants to see this happen and they, they they picture their dog or their cat in that situation they'll be like oh my god how dare you even make the reference it's like hey it's a four-legged animal that can't talk yeah like, yeah you know, yeah like, you know, that's that's what it is so it's got to bring up the standards and i'm not saying we need to treat humans as equal as animals i'm just saying that we should give uh, animals enough rights to not be subjugated or tortured and killed right right it's just we can see something as lesser but not like equal we but not have to kill it like we don't kill our animals for that same reason Mm -hmm. right we don't we don't kill our pets i mean we don't kill our pets because we see them more morally desirable than a pig but we need to give that pig, I think, the same level of, of that that dog deserves, right? So it's a little controversial, but you know, it 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 needs to be said. And I and I do represent a segment of the population that does want to see more ethically based um, legislation that actually accounts for all species and mm-hmm. not just us, because look what human based uh, laws have done to our planet. Yeah. Right. You know, if we if we consider the actual, you know, animals in the rainforest, you know, maybe we wouldn't chop them down so fast. Right. You know, mm-hmm. or or the or the deforestation. Right. That we do is like, man, if we actually took consideration of the deer and the wolves, you know, because we care about the animals, maybe we wouldn't have done that to the, to the rainforest or mm-hmm. murdered all the wolves. Right. So so that's those it's just those basic things that if humans just thought differently, I think we would have got our way out of a lot of really unattended consequences. Yeah. And yeah. It, we just saw everything as ours and now we're reaping what we sow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's just exploitation to the point where there's nothing left to exploit and now we're thinking how is this going to affect my life? But I think that this like conversation now is really it's crucial, right? Because a lot of people, they're thinking bigger, you know, they're, they're thinking long term, they're thinking, what is my place in history going to be? So like 200 years from now, if human beings are lucky enough to survive, you know, how will people look back at us now and how we treated animals? And that's my thought is, of course, ethically speaking, we're, 
you know, ideally always progressing forward. So I, I can't help but think I would very much judge myself, you know, unkindly as someone who's a meat eater. But it's about education. It's about kind of learning. Yeah. And really, it is. It's it's not just a diet change, which is kind of yeah. why the way that I viewed it was uh, this is just a diet, but I'm on it forever. But it's a lifestyle change. And that's it kind of lifestyle. it's learning. It's about, you know, messing, messing up, but taking the chance and then trying to reevaluate your position. Perfect. Exactly. My, my, my fiance, she drank college, uh, collagen by accident. It. And it was like, oh, you just got day zeroed, and we joke, we joke about it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you got do day zeroed, which means, oh, you lost your veganism. And you're gonna start from day one now, and not keep <laughs> features, which is a joke, of course. We, yeah. we don't do that to each other. Um, but but you know, it, it, it's become this this thing. So I do want to mention this about veganism. Okay, I want to mention some facts that maybe your audience doesn't know. Mm -hmm. So we have about 7.5 billion humans on the planet, right? And the we have 76 billion farm animals on the planet right now. Now think about that. Those cows, those pigs, those chickens, they eat a hell of a lot more food than we do, right? When it comes to grain, just per grain, right? That is just, it's just insane. So they account for 52% 50, 50, uh, of the land use. 51% of our actual fresh water use. It is uh, accounts for the same amount of emissions that every car, plane, truck, train, everything, all of our transportation combined is the animal agriculture. Um, it also is one of the largest polluters of ocean dead zones uh, in the entire country. We have uh, pig lagoons that are actually uh, going into communities uh, that are low poverty and giving them massive amount of, of, of asthma. Pig lagoons are basically holes in the ground that they dump the pig crap into and they just keep them there because there's nothing else and when there's a hurricane they just flood everything and get everybody else sick it's and get our vegetables with e coli um you know uh and and i just heard the statistic yesterday um four pounds of beef which is what the average american eats every month is equivalent to one flight from new york to london so think about that. Every average American in the country is taking the equivalent of one flight from New York to London on their own. That is how horrible beef is and all meat is in our entire in our animal products in general. Is is it's destroying our planet. Like it's comical to think about the fact that if we just didn't feed the cows, we'd have plenty of food for everybody like overnight. It, it, it's just it's just insanity to think that we played this stupid archaic game where people were like, oh, but if we eat all soy or we eat all vegetables and there wouldn't be enough vegetables for everybody. It's like the cows are eating something. Yeah. They're eating vegetables. They're eating soy. They're <laughs> it's eating such a grain. simple thing that you could think through like that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So we just cut out the middleman and then now we have all the soy in the grain. Yeah. So that they're eating and then we're going to be able to have the food necessary. But anyways, I just wanted to make sure that your audience understood the impacts of, of what animal agriculture is doing to our planet. Yeah. And and it is it is devastating. It is absolutely devastating. Go to a vegan calculator online and compare what your water save what you're saving in water, CO two emissions just alone. It's it's an, it's it's the fastest thing anybody can do for the environment yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, and that's what's really, I, I think, given me this sense of urgency because I already was won over with the morality argument. But also mm -hmm. when you factor in that carbon footprint and what it does to the planet, it's like this is just a no a no brainer. It's just not go, go doing vegan. It. Exactly. Go vegan. You and, know, I mean, and, and and I don't I don't say that to like you go vegan right now. Yeah. I say that because <laughs> I'm saying that because, like, you know, there's no reason not to. There's yeah. no moral justification other than meat tastes good mm -hmm. that is going to, you know, keep it. And, and right now, right now in this community, in our in the vegan community, it, like you're on the West Coast, you're even better, right? Yeah, like, yeah. So, so, so you have access to probably the best vegan foods that has ever existed on the planet. Portland, Oregon is yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. 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 So 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 there is even no more excuse for you either. Because, yeah. Because because you probably already have vegan friends that are doing it and you could easily learn. So, yeah. And that's so, a good yeah. point, because I, I kind of noticed something and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I do feel like yeah. there is a bit of a cultural shift, like we're in the middle of that, because before, yeah. like 10 years ago, it's like if you knew someone who was vegan, it was like that was so yeah. strange. Yeah. But now so many people are vegan. Like I know multiple people who are vegan where it's yeah. not it's not so like 
elusive anymore. It's like, it's oh. not a stereotype anymore. Exactly. It's just anybody, it's just anybody. you know, yeah. vegan politician, you know, vegan athletes, vegan, everybody like yeah. it's everybody. There's vegan everywhere, all over the corners of the globe. And the cheapest foods are vegan beans, rice, you know, veggies, fruits, mm -hmm. nuts, seeds. Like those are the cheapest foods in the grocery store. So, so a lot of people, and I, I always make fun of the, wherever a poor college kid, when you were eating ramen and bite beans and rice, you were vegan. <laughs> yeah, right? that's you true. You were living on that, you know? And, and so, so yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, I think we understand is like, if you don't eat meat, you just don't eat meat. And you, there's so many other things you can eat. There's 10,000 other ingredients you can choose from. Yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing those statistics and opening yeah. the door to that. I, I just think that it's so we're in such a fascinating time to where I want to pick the brains of veganism, especially since yeah. I'm so vegan curious. I'm, you know, I'm going to yeah. graduate yeah. from vegetarian to vegan, but I, I just think it's so fascinating.